Hello, today I'd like to discuss the Pipeline Manager, Pipeline Flow, and Forecast Tracker. Let's dive into the Pipeline Manager in SAP Sales Cloud version 2. Uh, this tool is a dynamic tool that gives the sales team a comprehensive view of their sales pipeline, enabling a better management and strategic decision making. With real-time insights, drag and drop functionality can quickly adjust and optimize your sales pipeline to align with changing business conditions. The Pipeline Manager ensures that you have a full visibility into every opportunity, helping you prioritize effectively and drive your sales process forward efficiently. So here you can see the login page. Um, and if I go down, I'm gonna go into the Pipeline Manager. So the first thing that's gonna be displayed is a bunch of circles. Now, what these circles or bubbles, if you would, represent are my opportunities. You can see here that I have 10 opportunities currently, and we're currently viewing the 2024 statistics. If I click on this, you do it by quarter. So if I want to look at Q2, I can click that, and it'll, you'll see that it's now representing six um, bubbles, if you would, and the different phases of where these opportunities currently are. So for example, this one here is in 60% um, you know, probability. And then from here, here's one that's 10, that's represented by the red mark. And of course, green ones will be represented by a um, by the win would be a big green bubble. So for our, our purposes of today's demonstration, I'm gonna go and use our year. So here you can see a couple that we've, that we're close to winning here. This was actually was marked one with 80% completed there and committed. And a couple of things I wanna drive your focus to is the one committed and best case and pipeline. So a lot of times uh, users might say, well, what's the difference between these? So one is self-explanatory, right? This, this shows you the number of opportunities you've won for the given timeline. So this is actually representing our year, if you would. Committed is, uh, it shows a sum of opportunities that a sales rep or sales team has committed. The amount includes one opportunities and those that are expected to close within that period. So that's kind of what represents a committed forecast, right? Um, typically, this is anything between, of course, 100% probability means you've won it, right? And then this could go all the way to 80%. And I've seen other examples where it goes to 70%, saying that there's a good chance you're going to land that. That leaves us with the next one here, which is best case. So best case builds on the committed amount, um, also includes opportunities that could be won if a best case scenario. So basically, it takes, okay, here's all your deals that are expected to close in a given quarter. And if all those close as expected, your best case is, is a million, right? In this example here. And then of course you have pipeline. So pipeline is the sum of all open opportunities, excluding the one opportunities. So that's the offset you'll see here with the best case um, because best case includes one, right? So that's the offset you see between these different values here. If you're more of a visual person, you don't like to see the bubbles, you wanna see a a more traditional bar chart. If you click the bar chart here, you'll see it represented now in a graph like this. For those that were on Sales Cloud version one, um, this is the intelligent sales execution feature. Um, with V2, you actually get this out of the box with no extra cost. So it, it does come with a lot of um, tool usage in here. If I scroll down, you could see that it shows the number of opportunities that are being represented. Um, I could also see total breakdowns. So if I click on it, I could see based on the opportunity owners, right? Who is bringing in the revenue and what their best case and pipeline showcases here. So I could see, for exa example, Mr. Wolf here is actually at 2.1 million. He's one, he's got roughly 150,000 inside the pipeline, right? So this gives you a view at a managerial level at what you're looking at for, between your sales reps in a given, again, in a given timeline for your pipeline decision-making. And then sales unit roll up, this will uh, this breaks down neatly as well. So if you have many units here in our demonstration today, I only have two, right? I have North American sales and I'm all the way down one little notch there to the Midwest sales team. So you can see the one committed to best case, all these features again, now this is more at the regional level, if you would. Those of us that have been in SAP for all, these are your sales unit breakdowns, right? So a very powerful piece um, in this alone. And this is the pipeline manager, uh, functionality inside the system. Okay, the next step I like to go over is, the next functionality that is I like to go over is the pipeline flow. So again, I'll click on the work center here and I'll go down to pipeline flow. Now what we're looking at here is this quarter. So you can see we have our fiscal year put in. So I do like to mention SAP has the functionality to maintain any of your custom uh, 
fiscal years. Um, right now we're operating on this one, which is April 1st through May 23rd. So the quarter is actually coming up here at an end today. And if I was to go through and click on something like, let's say pulled in, right? What this is representing is this is opportunities and, and a dollar amount that you've pulled in during this quarter. Um, typically what this, uh, what this means is you have got these parts, these different opportunities came in during this quarter. So in this case, we're, we've processed 2 million that we have in here. Um, and this gives us a quarter breakdown. So we can see we have actually have 5 million. If we were to end today, 5 million, right? Um, we did have a target. We said we passed that target uh, to the sum of 190%. Uh, we didn't lose anything, right? It's a great thing to report on. Uh, pipeline here, this will say that we had 2 million that is unchanged and then 2 million that we got brand new. And what unchanged means is as this quarter rolls over, you will see stuff that is called bleed over, right? Um, this means that this was opportunities that were intended to close here in this cycle or in this phase or even in this quarter for this example, but did not for whatever reason that was. They have now rolled in or we used to call it bleed into the next quarter. Then, of course, you have your one. And if you go down here, you actually see the ones that are one here. And if I go back to my example, the pulled in, you could see this will actually fetch the ones that we've actually pulled in from that date, from that quarter. We actually pulled these ones in as new. And then, of course, pipeline operates the same way. It tells you um, here's a couple ones that we've pulled in during that time in our pipeline. And again, this up here, this feature does work. So if I want to go by last year of last month, um, this will pull in different values for us based on my selection. Um, it'll update your different parts here. It breaks down by, it can break down by organizational level. So you can see here we're at the top level. I could go to the uh, subordinate um, or, you know, from the sales org, if you would, to the sales unit. It even goes down by phases as well. So if you want to take a look at certain phases, it'll break down this uh, graphical map as well. So basically what you get with the pipeline is with a clear view of how opportunities evolve, you could see which ones are processing as expected. And then you can take action. Um, for example, if you had a sales manager, you could see um, follow up with the sales rep and say, hey, certain opportunities based on your engagement, we need to get those opportunities flowed in and closed out this quarter. So you can see you started with 2 million and we blew right past that to 5 million. And that's what this represents here. So um, again, pipe this the pipeline flow is a excellent tool. Um, it helps really helps you drive your business and understand your different areas where you've actually won committed stuff or you've won certain aspects of the, of the business. Um, and again, the neat thing here is that it operates based on your selections of what you have in this table. So everything here is selectable and manipulated, and you can see the different breakdowns in a, in a graphical sense. Okay, last but not least is the forecast tracker. So finally, look at the forecast tracker and SAP Sales Cloud version 2. This tool is essential for accurate sales forecasting, offering advanced analytics that pr predict sales trends and potential outcomes. Forecast Tracker allows you to adjust forecasts based on real-time data. So this is this is the piece that most customers look for is how do we grow our business in real time? How do we use some of the analytics and forecasting that we have inside of the system? So what's neat here is with this, you'll be looking, can you look for the, the meet the short-term targets or even plan long-term strategic targets and this gives you the flexibility to drive towards both of them and gives you forecast accuracy and then obviously uh, drive success, right? So what's neat here is, again, you're at an interactive table. So I, these are these are live figures we're looking at here. Um, for example, I can see that we have a best case committed, right? Both of these numbers here, we have a target in mind. And what's neat with this is I could adjust this target on the fly. So if I come in, for example, and I want to adjust this and say, okay, 300,000, ah, I think that's a little too short. Maybe we should go with the 3 million mark, right? I hit enter. You can see just by a click of a button, the microservices that V2 offers in action. It literally snapped right to um, presenting that new target, which is delineated by this, this checkered line here. Um, it shows it right away for us. And you can see it even has a callback. If I wanted to jump to the pipeline manager, I could literally click that button and jump back to that as well. Um, if I hit submit here, 
You can even see it allows you to break down a given periods the different numbers you want to represent. So it even offers you a flexibility. And you, as the system grows, as you can tell, we're in 2024. This is a brand new system for us as well. You'll see these periods represented throughout the system. So what's neat there is, should we need to go back and refer to, what did we get last, last year around this time, right? What did we get last year Q2? What was our best case scenario? What was our snap history in time of what this was last year for us? That's where this system really gets its benefit as it starts building out the analytics behind that. Also down here, you'll see that we do have the option to toggle this opportunity in and out of our live rollup. So where this is really comes in benefit is maybe you have a reoccurring customer and you want them checked in here and maybe you don't want them. Maybe you want to see what is my net new customers, right? What are we, I want to see what those numbers are. I know this company's going to buy from us every quarter, but what about the new ones we got? Let's see what those look like, right? Um, you could toggle these in and out. And I know as a manager, sometimes you only want to toggle in ones that you know are going to land. So if I started a brand new deal, let's say that this deal here with uh, Brooks PR is a brand new deal, new customer. We're in the entry level of actually talking to them. I, I don't know if we're just there yet. I don't want to count this. I don't want this to be represented, right? At a click of a button, I've now taken that figure off. Right. I've now moved it out of my out of my view and now I'm just looking at the figures I want to look at. Um, same thing here is offered. You have the roll ups as well. So if I wanted to do different roll ups, I could show that as well. Then more importantly, what's offered inside this feature is this actions button. So here I could take a look at who has not submitted a forecast. Right. Um, big part here. Submissions by employees. So telling you when have they submitted their forecastings? What do they think their forecast is going to be? Right. So this part here is big. Um, it'll give you a list. Unfortunately, we're all in good standing here. Um, but if we had, we'd have a list of people that have not submitted their um, their run. So for example, James Allison, for example, has not submitted a forecast to us, right? So this allows you, again, to get that managerial standpoint and look at who has not submitted a forecast. And that's why they're not being represented here on our forecast tracker. Uh, breakdown totals again this operates the same way we saw previously this shows you those but this in this case it's in this feature as well and it does operate based on our selection so if you're in here and we adjust these the totals will break down differently as well okay um, and last but not least you have the live figures and you have forecast figures so if i click forecast figures again we don't have one actually set in play here so if i hit that it'll update to just a million for the live roll-up so if i hit this for example you'll see a new forecast was submitted and actually adjusted for me based on our best scenario and our committed all updated. And again, that's if you want to look at forecast figures. If you want to look at live figures, meaning that this is data that is already in the system, you could click that and it'll make an adjustment to some of your live figures as well. In this case, nothing adjusted because we both are operating both on those two pieces that we just operated on. So basically those, the forecast uh, live figures and the ones that we have both match the same stuff. So that's why it, there was no update needed for that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your uh, time today and I hope you stay tuned for new videos coming out weekly. Thank you.